welcome back and let's have a look at the second rule from the art of strategy uh, this rule seems simple it is titled if you have a dominant strategy use it in layman terms you could say that if you have a clear option so it means that uh, in all possible cases you should move in a certain direction the rule says please do so um, it may be clear and sound clear but in practice it can in some situations be counterintuitive so let's have a look and see why um, game theory is and the one thing which I would recommend you, you train and you, and you practice is all, if you like, about the art of uh, negotiating. And uh, from a negotiating situation, you can build these, what you will later see, are known as decision matrix, matrices. So imagine you are a student, the student and you are seriously considering dropping out of school. But on the other hand, you really want your own car. Your parents, on the other hand, want you to stay at school. So the key process in negotiation is, uh, which you will see here, is that uh, you both have uh, two options and at the same time these two options are somehow intertwined and when you are making these decisions you are making the decisions if you like at the same time uh, and if you like showing your card or putting your card or your decision on the table like a card in a game simultaneously in market situations uh, in the market you cannot agree or discuss with your uh, market competitor because that would be regarded as uh, preventing market competition, in, in other words, a cartel. So let's go back to this example. And uh, what you need to do is once you have these two cho choices or two options from both parties, uh, you then need to put them in an order of preference. So your preferences as a student and your best option gets the highest point is that, well, your best option is quitting school and have your parents buy a car. So you give it four points. Your second best option is to stay in school and get a car. You give it three points. Uh, your third best option is that you quit school and you do not get a car. And your worst possible option is that you stay in school and not get a car. Your parents do the same thing. And um, here you have their options. From their point of view, you stay in school and they don't buy you a car. Four points. You stay in school and they buy you a car. Three points. You quit school and they do not buy you a car. Two points. And of course, from their perspective, their worst option is you quit school and they have to buy you a car. Uh, sorry for the, the missing words there. Now, what you need to do is with different negotiation situations, train this and uh, try and see if you can get two options and uh, then try and see if you can get them intertwined and uh, then try to put them in an order of preference. Uh, moving on to the, the uh, next slide, here I have put them uh, uh, into a matrix, uh, which is very common in game theory. And then the question is, uh, how do you decide these situations? What will the other, if you are the student, how will the, the parent play this? And these are known as simultaneous games. And uh, you sort of put your card on, on the table, your choice on the table, at the same time. Uh, so let's have a look how you would decide this matrix. How do you solve it? 
uh, imagine you are the parent. So the big red arrow there, and the student, the child chooses stay in school. Well, then as a parent, your options are three or four, so you would choose the lower one. Well, imagine uh, you are the, the, the parent, and uh, the student would choose quit school. So then you have the options of one and two, and here again, the lower one, do not buy the car, is your best option. So in both cases, whether the student is uh, playing stay in school or quit school, your best option is not to buy a car. Now remember, the second rule of strategy is that if you have a clear option, in other words, a dominant strategy, please play it. So following these, this rule, the parents should play the do not buy a card. Now let's have a look at the student. The student would uh, ask the question, what if the uh, parents decide to buy a car? What are my best options? Or what are my options? Well, the student's options are in red, and they are the three and the four, and four is better. Now let's have a look at the lower one. If the parents decide to play the do not buy a car, the student's best options are the one and two, or the two options are the one and two, and the best option is the two. So in both cases, the best option, the, or the better option, uh, for the uh, student is to play quit school, and hence following the, the uh, second rule of strategy, if you have a dominant strategy, please play it, the student will be playing quit school. So what happens here is that the dominant strategy of the student is to quit school, and the dominant strategy of the parent is to not buy a car, and you end up in the bottom right-hand corner. Now this is slightly counterintuitive because uh, the top left-hand corner leaves both of the players better off. But if you are making a decision simultaneously without agreeing with the other party, you should follow your dominant strategy. Now, the art of negotiation is that you should agree make an agreement that if you stay in school, I will buy a car and sign that contract, and hence you would end up in the top left-hand corner. So negotiating is about changing what you would do if the parties are just following their own best options. In a negotiation, you agree on doing something different to this, and at the same time, perhaps, getting a better option for both. So have a look at this once again. It's not as easy as it seems, and it needs some time before you can sort of wrap your brain around the problem. Thank you for listening.